إنه من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وإمامنا وقائدنا ونبينا ورسولنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله بالغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك وبعد فإن أفضل حديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في دين الله بدعة وكل بدعة في دين الله ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم أجرنا من النار My sisters, my brothers, siblings in Islam, siblings in faith I begin with the greeting of Islam, the greeting of Salam May the peace and the blessings of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you and your families and your loved ones. I begin by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Acknowledging and reminding that the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger, final prophet and a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reminding myself and you that whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomever is allowed to go astray due to their own wrongful actions, sinful desires, and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us all steadfast, Ya Rabb Ameen. To keep us on the path that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabb Ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from those that He finds where He's pleased and never where He is displeased, Ya Rabb Ameen. Ameen. My brothers and my sisters, it is still fresh in our minds. The images of those that were buried under the rubble before they were buried under the ground. Those that, subhanAllah, we have been watching uh, and seeing pictures of and images of. And of course, it gives us an opportunity to reflect. As believers, whatever happens, we know it only happens through the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهُ Whatever happens, whatever calamity happens, Allah mentions in the Qur'an, happens only through the permission of Allah. Happens only through the permission of Allah. Nothing is random. The Qur'an is very clear about that. Nothing is coincidental. And Allah mentions in the same ayah, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهُ And whoever puts their faith in Allah, Allah will guide their hearts. Allah guides their hearts to cope with what's happening. Allah guides their hearts to understand even a portion of what's happening, to accept what's happening, to work constructively as a result of what's happening, not destructively, to ask the right questions and to take the right steps, not to ask the right, wrong questions that can debilitate and be harmful and be limiting and be destructive. And so let's begin constructively by reminding and we've heard this many times, but inshallah, as a final reminder, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us through the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From our point of view, ash-shuhada'u khamsa. Martyrs are five categories. Al-mat'unu, wal-mabtunu, wal-gharikhu, wa sahibu al-hadmi, wal-shahidu fi sabilillah. Wal-hadithu muttafaqun alayhi. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded us that the martyrs are five categories. The person who dies in a plague, or the person who is affected to a point where they are gone, they leave this dunya through a plague. And the person who passes in this dunya from anything that affects them in their stomach, any cancer, any illness of the stomach, or pain of the stomach. And then the person who is drowned and passes this dunya in a state where they're drowning. And the person who is buried under rubble, affected by an earthquake, etc. And the person who gives up their life, this dunyawi life, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to defend their honor, to defend their land, to defend their faith, or to defend their family, the person who passes as a martyr in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're all considered to be shuhada. They're all considered, considered to be martyrs. Now what does it mean to be considered as a martyr? What it means to be considered as a martyr is beautifully described in the Quran. Allah says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَيَسْتَبِشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ 
ألا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. You know the Quran it's so beautiful, it's so assuring, reassuring. It tells it to you perfectly, to the point, concisely. Do not say that those that left this world as martyrs, do not say they're dead. Do not think that they're dead. بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ They are alive. عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ In the company of the Lord. يُرْزَقُونَ They're still being provided for. They're still being given a risk of some kind, sustenance. You don't know it. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ In another ayah. You can't perceive it. It's beyond your capacity to perceive. So they've left their dunya, this dunya. They're no longer accessing you. You're no longer accessing them. You cannot communicate with them. They cannot communicate with you, but they're not dead. We don't say that they're dead. You know, we say they're martyrs, but then in our statements, we say they're dead. We say they've died. So we have to be careful with our words. They've passed, but they're not dead. Bal ahya. Allah makes it clear. They are alive in the presence of the Lord being provided for. Now you can say they're alive, but what kind of life is this? Maybe they're sad because we don't get to speak to them anymore. Or they're anxious, so Allah reassures you. And says, فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ They're happy. They're rejoicing with what Allah has given to them. And they consider it to be a grace, a fadl, an honor. They consider it to be a grace, a gift from Allah. So they're happy with the gift that they have received from Allah. وَيَسْتَبِشِرُونَ And they're waiting with good news. They're waiting with بُشْرَى بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَنْحَقُوا بِمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ Waiting for the people that they've left behind in this world to be reunited with them in Jannah. And if they could speak to us, they would say, do not be sad. Do not be anxious. Do not be worried over us. Do not be anxious about what happened to us. We're happy with what Allah has given us. That's what Allah describes. That they're considered to be given that level and that status, which is amazing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we don't worry about them and we don't say that that's a punishment towards them. That is the innocent among them, the innocent, the children, the good believers, those that did nothing wrong in their lives, those that lost their lives instantly, those that were buried as kids, as women, as elders. They had no capacity within their hands to do anything about it and did not contribute to this in any shape or form. They're innocent. They're martyrs in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what about those amongst them and those amongst us that have forgotten about the fact that Allah is always in control? Those amongst us and amongst them and amongst anywhere in the world where these things happen, where they've been living a life of delusion and illusion, lying and stealing and cheating. You know, the Quran is very specific. The Quran does not treat everybody the same. The Quran is very specific. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is very specific. Do a hadith, give us a lot of hope. I want you to listen to the words and the promise of the Prophet. Aisha radiallahu anha says, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. Reminding us of the ayah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ The ayah where Allah promises we will test you. With loss of wealth, loss of health, loss of life, loss of provisions. We're going to test you with these things to see what you do. And let's give glad tidings to the believers. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the hadith is also mentioned by Abi Musa al-Ash'ari, who says that I heard an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Ummati hadihi, ummatu marhuma. My ummah, this ummah, is an ummah that is blessed by Allah with mercy. That Allah has given my ummah a specific kind of mercy. So what did he mean? He says, لَيْسَ عَلَيْهَا عَذَابٌ فِي الْآخِرَةِ my ummah is not going, the majority of my ummah is not going to be punished in the hereafter. They're going to go to Jannah straight. But, عَذَابُهَا فِي الدُّنْيَا Their punishment is in this world. الْفِتَنْ وَالْزَلَازِلْ وَالْقَتْلِ 
my ummah will experience three categories of tribulations. They will experience a lot of fitan. You know fitan, where you have war, tension between brothers, sisters, tension between people living in the same border, under the same language. All these tensions that will cause communities to fight, to disagree, to depart. Wazalazil and earthquakes, wal qatl, and a lot of battles and infighting. Meaning that this ummah will be tested and tried in more than any other ummah. So when you see this happening to us, don't ask the question of why is this happening to us? Why is it always us? Say, Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See, the Prophet has spoken the truth. He told us this is going to happen. He said, you will see a lot of fitan and qatil and earthquakes happening. And they're not punishments per se, especially to those affected. It's rahmah for them. Because he says, ummati ummatu marhuma. But it becomes actually for many of us a reminder to wake up. A reminder that we're not in charge. A reminder that we're not in control. A reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can flip reality upside down instantly. A reminder that we cannot always be prepared for the unseen and the unknown. A reminder to remember and to reflect and to think about how he's always watching, how he's always clearly aware and present with his knowledge. And so for the rest of us, if we're watching all of these videos and these audios and these descriptions and reading this news and nothing in our lives have changed and has changed, then we've missed the point. Then we've missed the point. This should cause us to reflect, yes, to get together, to unite, to donate, to give back, to support, to make dua, to get up in qiyam and to make dua for them, to rethink about our own families, our own connections, our own relationships, but most importantly, to get us to think about our connection with Allah. That's the purpose of any test in this dunya. It forces you to look at yourself and ask yourself the question, am I good enough today? Is my salah good enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is my service good enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is my heart ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is my honesty, integrity, goodness, my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids, my relationship with my husband, my relationship with my parents, my relationship with my father and mother, my community, is it where Allah has asked me to place it? Is it where Allah is expecting for it to be? Or is it not where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting it to be? And let me give you some good news. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said to Aisha radiallahu anha and the hadith is sahih ala sharti muslim. This is a beautiful hadith and I want you to listen to this carefully and listen to what Anas says at the end of the hadith. An Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu أنه دخل على عائشة ومعه رجل من التابعين فقال لها الرجل يا أم المؤمنين حدثينا عن الزلزلة أنس بن مالك an older man walks to visit Aisha to ask the wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam a question behind the veil and with him is one of the tabi'een one of the men of the second generation who asks her Tell us, what did the Prophet ﷺ, what did your husband say about earthquakes? And the hadith is authentic on the conditions of Imam Muslim. Hadith is very beautiful. What did your Prophet, what did the Prophet ﷺ, what did our Prophet, what did your husband or Aisha say about earthquakes? So she says, إِذَا اسْتَبَاحُوا الزِّنَا وَشَرِبُوا الْخَمْرَ وَضَرَبُوا بِالْمَغَانِ وَغَارَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ فِي سَمَائِهِ فَقَالَ لِلْأَرْضِ تَزَلْزَلِي بِهِمْ فَإِنْ تَابُوا وَنَزَعُوا وَإِلَّا هَدَمَهَا عَلَيْهِمْ قلت يا أم المؤمنين أعذاب لهم قالت لا بل موعظة ورحمة وبركة للمؤمنين ونكال وعذاب وسخط على الكافرين. What a beautiful hadith. 
So Anas ibn Malik comes with this man who asks the Prophet's wife Aisha, radiallahu anha, tell us about earthquakes. Inform us, what should we know? She said, and of course she's reporting what she heard from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Once they consider zina to be halal, they normalize zina. They normalize infidelity of all kinds. And once they consider drinking alcohol to be normal and accepted, and once they start swaying right and left with music, with songs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of jealousy and protectiveness over his creation announces from the heavens, O earth, shake them, remind them, bring them to clarity. And so the earth shakes a little bit. And if we repent and turn back and reflect, Allah says, go back to your normal state. But if it reaches a point where this becomes the norm, and everybody begins to do it and reg reg uh, neglect the reminder when it comes, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the earth to crack and to destroy the majority of them. We're not talking about these people. We're not talking about the innocent here. But we're using that incident to remind us of how Allah is in charge and is in control. And how the earth shakes by his permission. Sometimes to bring mercy to certain people who are living on the edge. Waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call them back to him. Waiting to be reunited with him. There's no justice for them in this dunya. So Allah takes them back and gives them the ultimate justice and the ultimate rahmah. They go back to Allah as martyrs. But the same situation, exact same situation, can be a punishment. And that's what the tabi'i mentioned to Aisha. Ya Aisha, is this going to be a punishment? He responded, she responded, I heard from a Nabi Wasallam that it's not a punishment. Actually, it's clarification, purification, blessings, and a reminder and mercy for the believer but a reminder that Allah is upset, a deterrent, and a punishment for the disbeliever. And my brothers and my sisters, if we hear this hadith and we're not thinking about our own reality, how many of us have normalized looking at the haram, listening to the haram, speaking the haram, making illicit conversations acceptable amongst our families, amongst our children, becoming complacent in all of these areas. And wallahi, my intention in saying this is not to deter us or to scare us, but the Quran is always placed in this ayat as a reminder of mercy, that Allah loves you, and because He loves you and He loves us, He's reminding us to go back to where He expects of us, because that is what is best for us. And if we don't realize it now, we're going to realize it when it's too late. When we're standing in front of him, witnessing the ultimate shaking. And we gave this, subhanAllah, khutbah just a couple of days before the incident. How the ultimate shaking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds, إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَى لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْا أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ Imagine the description that Allah gives us. When the earth shakes, it's ultimate shaking. And the earth begins to throw out all of the things that have remained hidden inside of it. All of the stories of injustice. All of those who were buried victims of crime. All of this history that was rewritten in a biased manner. People whose history has been erased. Nations whose you know, uh, wealth was stolen and reburied somewhere else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the earth will throw out all of the things that were hidden inside of it. And the human being will look around and say, what's going on with this earth? On that day, the earth will be told to tell its story. Imagine the earth that we're walking on will be told, now is your chance to get it off of your chest. 
Tell us the history of humanity as it actually happened. Tell us the history of this man or that woman as it actually happened. Not as they pretended or wrote or presented or marketed, but as it actually happened. And on that day, the earth will tell its story. And our hands will speak and tell the story. And our tongues will speak and tell their story. And our eyes will speak and tell their story. And our legs will speak and tell their story. And most will be testified against, but some will be testified for. So imagine when your own limbs will begin to speak and say, you didn't know this man, but he actually went to the masjid at night in the dark when nobody else was watching and he donated privately and she stayed up at night when nobody else was there praying with tears in her eyes for her ummah, praying by name for the people that she was she knew were struggling she helped this person and helped that person that nobody knew about all these secrets that she kept between her and Allah because she knew that nobody else mattered besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the stories will be untold and unfolded and the opposite is true this person stole from this orphan who didn't know. This person cheated on his wife and she didn't know. This person lied about this contract and did this in business and did that and, you know, maneuvered in this way and this way. Nobody knew, but now it's coming out. So my brothers and my sisters, to recap, what is happening around the world is a reason to come together, to unite, to reflect, to give back, to think about our own life. What happened to them is rahmah, they're considered to be martyrs, we make dua for them and we do the best that we can to prevent as much as possible and to learn from this lesson as much as possible. But at the same time, we look into our own lives and ask, when could my individual account be? And when could my individual punishment come? And when could my individual rahmah be? Or individual expose in this dunya or in the akhirah? And am I ready for that? Am I ready for my story to be told? Am I ready for my actions to be read in the presence of Allah? Am I ready to receive the book with my right hand or will I receive it behind me out of shame? Be aminhi or wala adhahrihi. Which one will I be? And if I am not where I want to be, how can I get there? And what actions do I have to take to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me to getting there. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy, Ya Rabb, Ameen, on the families of those that were affected. May Allah give them patience and resilience and tenacity and strength. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them in ways that cannot be imagined in khair, Ya Rabb. Allahumma subba alayhum al khair sabban sabba. Allah, oh Allah, we ask you to pour your khair upon them, a pouring, a pouring one after the other. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to come together to support them, to learn from this and to hold ourselves accountable before we are held accountable. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم السائل المسلمين فاستغفروا النور الغفور الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا في معطيت اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا مهتدين اللهم تقبل منا وقبلنا واجعلنا مقبولين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على من عادانا يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تؤخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لموتانا موت المسلمين الذين شهدوا لك بالوحدانية ولنبيك بالرسالة وماتوا على ذلك اللهم اغفر لشهداء المسلمين اللهم تقبل منهم يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل شهداءنا يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل شهداءنا وارزقهم الفردوس الاعلى يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لأمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن واهدنا بالقرآن وثبتنا بالقرآن واغفر لنا ونور بصيرتنا بالقرآن يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وهمومنا اللهم ذكرنا من القرآن ما نسينا وعلمنا من القرآن ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوة القرآن أناء الليل وأطراف النهار على الوجه الذي يرضيك عنا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاية ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة من الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مقوتا 
استوموا مستقيم وتراص اعتدلوا سدوا الخلل تصل ولا تختلفوا Straighten the line, leave no gaps, feet and shoulders aligned, stay connected, not divided. Allah! Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين اذا وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله الحمد لله يا رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله سمع الله لمن حمده Allah